Over the past 25 years, Florida has witnessed a massive political shift. Greetings from the free state of Florida. Although it was once considered the largest and most volatile swing state. If Florida goes blue, it's over. Today, Florida is a stronghold for the modern Republican Party. Republicans hold supermajorities in the state legislature. And Governor Ron DeSantis is turning Florida into a hub for conservative policy experiments. But how did this happen? Let's first rewind to the 90s. In 92, George H.W. Bush won Florida by one point. Bill Clinton won by six points in 96. And in 2000, George W. Bush narrowly won after a drawn out recount process that was ultimately decided at the Supreme Court. Bush won Florida again in 2004, but Obama flipped the state in 2008 and won it again in 2012. This seemed promising for Democrats. Obama had nearly tied then-GOP presidential nominee Mitt Romney for the state's conservative-leaning Cuban-American vote, and Florida was only becoming larger and more diverse. But Florida swung again in 2016, when Trump won the state back for Republicans, defeating Hillary Clinton by just over one point. In the 2018 gubernatorial election, Trump flexed his Florida influence, endorsing Ron DeSantis, who narrowly defeated his Democratic challenger Andrew Gillum by less than one percentage point. In 2019, Trump declared himself a resident of Florida, holding meetings with Republican officials, donors, and operatives at his Mar-a-Lago resort. My, our, home state, Florida. For two years in a row, the Conservative Political Action Conference ditched its usual venue near Washington, D.C. for Florida. And in 2020, Trump widened his lead over President Biden in the state, winning by three points. Some observers say Florida's coronavirus pandemic politics also played a significant role in accelerating the state's shift to conservatism, as DeSantis helped turn the state into a popular destination for Americans living under lockdowns and restrictions in other parts of the country. While it's long been viewed as a destination for retirees and others seeking a warmer climate and generally lower taxes, the state's status as an open state during much of the height of the pandemic attracted Americans looking for a return to the normalcy of a pre-coronavirus world. During the pandemic, nearly 394,000 new voters moved to Florida between July 2020 and July 2021, and nearly half of them registered Republican, according to voter data. In 2022, Florida became the fastest growing state in the country. Florida's electorate was also shifting from within. Between January 21 and September 2022, nearly 550,000 Florida voters changed their party affiliation. Voters left the Democratic Party at nearly twice the rate as they left the GOP. Republicans surpassed Democrats in voter registrations in late 2021, and they've only continued to grow their lead. There are now nearly 437,000 more registered Republican voters in the state than Democrats. DeSantis and Florida Republicans saw their biggest victory yet in the 2022 midterms, even as many Republican candidates across the country floundered. For the first time since the post-Civil War Reconstruction era, Florida Republicans won both U.S. Senate seats, governor, and the entire cabinet. On top of that, Republicans gained supermajorities in the state legislature. DeSantis was credited with much of the success. Now, he's used his perch in the governor's mansion to advance a policy agenda that largely embodies the ideals of his party, lifting COVID-19-related lockdowns and restrictions, launching a political war against what I call the woke mind virus, including the Parental Rights and Education Act, efforts to ban diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in Florida colleges and universities, and creating a state agency dedicated to investigating election crimes and voter fraud. This bill protects voters' rights. I mean, LOL members, like, <laughs> I thought there were checks and balances in government. In interviews with The Hill, a dozen Democratic operatives, strategists, and elected officials cited the need to ramp up voter registration efforts, local organizing and turnout operations, and candidate recruitment, conceding that the party had repeatedly failed to follow through on those efforts in recent years. Others are more optimistic about the party's chances. Representative Maxwell Frost, a 26-year-old who was elected to Congress last year, called the deep series of Democratic losses in 2022 an anomaly, arguing that the combination of DeSantis's massive campaign war chest and lackluster Democratic turnout created a perfect storm for his party. And Democrats say that, unlike the pandemic policies, they have room to hit back against Republicans in 2024 on social issues. This abortion ban is insane. Be very warned that we will vote you out. In the words of Ron DeSantis, you ain't seen nothing yet. 